Howdy, neighbors. neighbors! Welcome to the Fence Bar. I'm Neighbor Sharif. I am Neighbor Sean, coming to you live on tape from the beautiful spring-filled lower Hudson Valley. It's spring, man. We have the fountain on, the flowers are blooming, the animals are frisky. Flowers are everywhere, and I'm loving it, man. I'm just absolutely loving it. But you know what? Before we get too far into this episode, i got to give some shout-outs to an amazing people that came to support episode five. Yeah, episode I mean, five Campbell's awesome. meets, uh, we, we, uh, there's so Campbell many people, meets. and he can't, hey, he's got the that was He's on a three-episode uh, streak right now, and the we like it. They're always awesome. We like it. We have DJ Dirty Santa and DJ Tudo Azul, Tudo Azul. the Brazilian beef. Uh, and uh, we had uh, some amazing beer from Sloop Rowing Company. Joe Turco, big, big, big tops, and uh, Chris DeChico. The whole DeChico, and the DeChico and Sons, all the DeChico and Sons, Millwood. Yeah. So anyway, uh, awesome. thank you guys for coming. It made it a really special night. But speaking of special night, what the hell are we doing out here at this fence? Well, you know, normally times people put fences in between each other so that they can be divided. We don't do that at the fence bar. We put a bar on top of it, and we bring people over with beers to unite us. Yeah, so that's what this has become. It's been a little community gathering. It's coming all over the place. I mean, it's, it's awesome. It's a place where you can just be you. You can fence. We've had a, we've had a nice uh, group of neighbors coming over, and it's been really special. We like it. And now there's only a couple of rules at the fence bar. The first one is the vessel that you're going to drink. There's no rules at fence bar. Well, actually. there's well, there aren't any rules. I don't think there are rules. It's more, uh, okay. you know. So what is it? Uh, it's a, uh, uh, you know, kind of a, a suggestion where you can have a beer that you drink a lot of, right. and you drink it throughout the night. It's a low ABV. Uh, we call it a dad light or a mom light or a mom light. Exactly. It's something that you're going to hydrate with. You, you need know. a lot of it. You need to buy it by the 12 to 36 exactly. intervals. Plus. There you go. This is not a, a, a single can purchase or a, even a four pack. You got to go a little, you little a bit lot deeper. Of it. Yeah, absolutely. And, and then, then ooh, sidecar. The sidecar. Yeah. The interesting thing. Like, what is it going to be? Is it something rare? Something that would somebody brought to share? Um, and in this case, we're doing uh, sours uh, for this episode. So our sidecars are going to be full of uh, sours. All sours. Yeah. All sours all the time. And it's really, uh, it's if someone brings a special can, or I, it, if you just want to try a bunch of exactly. stuff, it Maybe gives you an opportunity. I only had one of these, everybody get out your sidecar, we're yeah. just going to get everybody an ounce. Fresh catch! Out. What's that? Fresh I got a catch. fresh catch here! Fresh you catch! There. What do we got going uh, on, man? Mike the table! What we got here? Made on honor? Yeah. Sold on merit. What is it, man? Oh, Look at the camera. You got fresh it. catch. Fresh catch from Naren Gansett Brewing Company. Good God, that's gonna perfect. That's a perfect dad light. Dad light of the night. The dad light of the night. Hold on, let me finish off this guy real quick. There you go. Thank you. Want a brewer's rinse? No, no brewer's rinse tonight. Let's go right for it. So anyway, we're gonna get back to you in just two seconds. It shakes with lamb's tail. So I believe we should bring in, save a little bit for our our guest, our first guest, Harper's Justin from Harper's. Yes. Hell yes. So speaking of wonderful dad lights that you want to share with your neighbor, uh, Justin, could you uh, mind joining us over here well, at the fence dad bar? Dad what are you I drinking in to. your dad light right there? What do I have to? That's, uh, yeah, uh, that's the Ill Life uh, Brewing Company's Electric Rhino, I believe. Yeah, they were. Yeah, they just brewery. Brand new brewery from a really great bar that's been in Long Island City for a while, Ill Wife and uh, Van Patrick. Doniger has been working his uh, his, uh, his little his little toes off to get this thing up and running. And man, yeah, so good. It's good. It's good. So good. What do you think? It, I thought it just kind of like flows and just rolls right off it's, the tongue. It's yeah, good. It's, it's a good dad light. Totally. It's a perfect dad yeah. light. Exactly. Awesome, Paris man. So thanks for coming to Fence Bar. Uh, thanks for having me. You're a Westchester uh, restaurant owner, and uh, you own uh, Harper's on Main from Dobbs, in Dobbs Ferry, and I'm from Dobbs Ferry. I was born and raised in Dobbs Ferry. And uh, you're a Westchester guy, so for people who are not from Westchester, I want you to tell them what it's what why Westchester is, it is like. And why, yeah, what's it like to be in Westchester? What is it like to be in Westchester? Yeah, I'm originally or from like Ohio, so like you were explaining to me before I came to Westchester. What would you, what would you, how would you explain Westchester? Well, I think to start, I think Westchester <coughs> people don't completely understand. Okay. You've got people that live in the city that think that it is 
Upstate. 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 Yeah, I hear that too much. Yeah. Yeah, it's called upstate. It's, it's, it's all back is upstate. No, no, it's not big care. People who live upstate think it is overly hoity toity, it's the city. Right? Yeah, right. It's too suburbs. close. It's too, it's it's too close. close. Yeah. It, yep. Doesn't it's Hillary Clinton live there? Yeah. 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 It's, it's right. elitist, elitist suburb. Yeah. Uh -huh. how, how, um, how many of your patrons are coming up from New York City and, and they think they're like really getting out into the country by going to Dobbs Ferry? Yeah. Like how many of them have like like water sacks like those camelbacks? <laughs> when they walk the, the yeah. yeah, really. Because <laughs> yeah. it is. It's really close to the. It's really close to the train station. It's probably a half an hour from Grand Central and a seven minute walk up to Harper's from Dobbs Ferry train station. So uh, my wife actually had her uh, baby shower there, a co-ed baby shower. And it was the most convenient way That's of awesome. getting all our friends up from the city and having like a because convenient location. Because you got location. Metro North, yeah. you get off Dobbs Ferry. And they were going upstate, man. They were going to Dobbs Ferry. <laughs> they packed like a change of clothes. Yeah. You know, they weren't sure if it was going to rain or, you know, had some mosquito, like the, the Deet, yeah. you know, they didn't have like mosquito repellent. But you're deet. you're a beer guy, um, and that like, like that, beer, that's, that's yeah. especially yeah. appropriate for our show. Um, you actually host a, a home brewing yeah. competition at Harper's. Totally. Yep. yep. What, a, when's that? So that is October twelfth. Yeah. This year will be the third annual. Uh, farmhouse farmhouse yeah. ales. Specifically, yeah. you guys are doing yeah. farmhouse yeah. ales. Yeah. Right. That's dope, farmhouse man. Farmhouse ales, yeah. We get a different brewery response for us every year. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Captain Lawrence. Captain Lawrence, number three. Pretty yeah. convenient uh, yeah. home brewery for us. Yeah. Oh, my God. So Speaking about we, we went there, actually, uh, last week, we and we were just favorite. blown away by the food, the beer, the vaporous, the vaporous aromatic. The bingo! The bingo! Bingo, bingo, yeah. bingo But the, their new food there, they got a whole new Asian-inspired I, I honestly uh, think it's it some of the best. Yeah. Yeah. Guys, guys, so guys, those wings! Yeah. Those yeah. wings! Uh, yeah. Dude, I brought and we wings took home yo, twice. Three times. Ginger wings. Oh, they're tight. Yeah. yeah. Really good, yeah. Awesome, man. Well, uh, we usually uh, talk about, uh, we, we always ask our uh, uh, guests three questions. Yep. And the first question is, in your refrigerator right now, what beer is in there? Not what beer do you wish was in there, right. but what is in there right yeah. now? Don't, you need to impress anybody. I'm picturing an Amstel White. Oh, <laughs> I love it. Yeah. yeah. Is that next to a Twisted Tea? No. <laughs> no, I've got a lot it's of Clamato juice. Turn bottle of seltzer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Anything else though in the fridge? I mean, are you um, the answer? I think I drank everything. That <laughs> Good. Yeah. And you also brought drink. some nice stuff. Yeah, I yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank we you. sold the beer from Iceland in the fridge. Yeah. I don't know if yeah. we still have that. What's in the fridge? The beer from Iceland, or did we drink all that? I think we drank. Oh, I brought some cool Amherst from Iceland. I'm going back. Uh, Tom. We did drink all that. That was yummy. Yeah. Yeah. I forgot the brand. Yeah. Way to bring it around. Okay, so now you. This is a question we normally ask people that uh, don't professionally throw parties every night for their living, because as a restaurateur, I mean that's sort of what your world is, right? You know, you more or less. Yeah, you're throwing a party every night and hoping they all show up. Yeah, <laughs> and then you have enough food. Yeah, you have enough food. Right, enough yeah. beer. Yeah. All those good things. Yeah. Uh, but let's say, okay, yeah, Harper's is closed. Personal you know, party. It's uh, You're inviting over all your favorite fence bar people. Yeah, all your neighbors. And, and uh, what are you going to be serving? Is it going to be a selection, one thing? Just in your mind, when you are doing the curation of the best party ever, how do you pick up your beer? What's your strategy? Oh, man. Well, I trying to cast. Well, ah, this is a cast. Yeah. 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 Why not? Yeah. That's yeah. usually yeah. the strategy. That's man. that's the strategy coming from like a big restaurant. Buffet. Or, mm -hmm. But if I'm inviting, it's I'm hand selecting the guests that I'm bringing in. Right. Ooh, I know intimate. my. I really, really, Very really know my audience intimately. Yeah. Then I'm gonna kind of base around our taste because okay. chances are we're sharing. That's a great like answer. Yeah. Yeah. Now, can we expand? When can we come so over? Far, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let's <laughs> answer this question. Yeah. yeah. So okay. So now uh, your the party that you're throwing now includes Sharif, uh, me, Mikey, Tables, wives, and Amy, and and, and yeah. Kiana. Yeah. What are you gonna? What are we drinking? Oh. I think for the moment, it's actually a Nice! Yeah. Nice! Yeah. Yeah. This is a good little selection we have up here. Well, cool. But do you have like one dad light or mom light that you like to go for for a party? Corona! 
Yeah. <laughs> so Corona, so cool. Narragansett, you know, yeah, I got a Gansett. Actually, Narragansett is pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's yeah. convenient. It's convenient Very that convenient. I have a couple kids next to me because yeah. it's a good dad life. Yeah. It's good, good, easy drinking. Yeah. You awesome. Hydrate yeah. yeah. at all times. Cool. Question number three. This is our favorite question, I think. It's your most uh, memorable experience, definitive moment with beer. Uh, you know, first sip. Could be good. Um, could be like that, that girlfriend that, breakup. Uh, the bad, like the cold 45 you drank out of the train track. Yeah. I mean, you broke or, yeah. You know, Edward scissor her hand. <laughs> you gave all over the place. Yeah. Or it could be a great night where you got to hang out at a fence bar and you never experienced a pop pop preposterous or whatever. It's, you know. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> the pop 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 preposterous. So that means tonight's your favorite. Tonight is. Tonight is actually yeah. 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 Tonight is. It's, it's usually Sean's favorite night too because it's the last night of his life that I remember. The last one he remembers. <laughs> but there she just we are uh, we are we are we are very kin to each other. Uh, yeah. We professionally throw parties for our uh, for our living. That's great. Before we get you out of here, as a Westchester resident, as a, as someone who grew up in Westchester, if you could give someone a tip about uh, dining, restauranting, uh, going out, and hiking. Uh, what's a good tip for someone who's not from around here or someone who wants to explore this festival? Yep. <coughs> Stay away from chains. There are a lot of really, really solid, independent uh, store owners, restaurants, and not just restaurants, but stores in general. Yes, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, small family businesses uh, that really make up the the fiber. The fiber. fiber of Westchester yeah, is small business owners. That's awesome. Thank you for that. So, um, just let everybody know where Harper's is, how they could find you. Make sure you look, uh, look over into that beautiful camera. Uh, 92 Main Street, downtown Dobbsford, New York. Five minute walk from the Metro North, Dobbsford. Rivertown. 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 What's on tap right now? Oh man, it's all here or 100% here. You are? Is yeah. that a choice or just to have a choice? Okay. Because there are so many. Yeah, 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 yeah,
We'll yeah. talk about it. A yeah. custom. A custom. We'll do you a custom job. Yeah. We'll, we'll call you. Yeah. We'll call you. We'll call you. Awesome. Yeah. yeah man, that's, uh, uh, that's a wonderful that. time, man, when you get to meet a like minded person. That's a good that's neighbor, man. I a great neighbor. You know, yeah. I, like, I like all our neighbors. Don't get me wrong. We all got great neighbors. That guy? Great neighbor. One. Hey, uh, what time is it, Mikey? Beer brain. Beer brain. I was gonna say neighbor time, but beer brain. Beer brain. Idiot. <laughs> and we've had like a half an hour break <laughs> intermission where we had some delicious pork from. Well, that's what happens when you when you slow roast uh, a, a a pig butt for seven blades. hours. Yeah. Butt blades. Uh, but, pork butt blades. Pork butt blades. Blade. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so now we're good. We ate some food. We drank some sours while we were eating it. It's and time for beer brains, man. And speaking of sours. Yeah. Well, this is when we really start talking about some of the crafts and, and what's going on with these beers and why they taste so delicious. You've been telling me about this for a while, um, the sours. Right. But it's kind of a new thing where it, it, it's a little bit different. Whoa! Oh, yeah. It's alive! Damn, that hurt. That was a good one. Good stuff. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. It's a little, it's a little bit different biases. than your uh, traditional beer, um, and we've always talked about ales and lagers. Two, every single beer is only ales or a lager. But Until what is a you sour? Get sour, man? You get wild, man. Let's get wild with the sour. Is that is that what's going on with the sour? It, it's a it's a different type of yeast, so it's gonna it's gonna affect your beer in a different way. So the majority of sours are going to be ales, but they can still be lagers because you're, you're essentially taking away, I don't want to get too geeky here, but you're taking away the traditional brewer's yeast, which is like a Saccharomyces or a Sack, and now you're going to introduce another form of uh, yeast, um, um, like a Britannomyces or a Brett or a lactobacillus. Is, that, is that, that, that what gives it that like uh, puckering? Tart, yeah, that because tartness. The, the purpose, Say it again. Uh, the puckering? No. The puckering of the throat? Lacto... Oh, you have to tell me that. Lactobacillus. I always get that wrong. I also can't say hippopotamus. <laughs> Lactobacillus. Around the bottom list. Just like the paw paw uh, <laughs> over here. Yeah. Uh, but, but essentially, like, if you think historically about sour beers, they really just come back into fashion. Uh, or at least in common brewing in the last 10 years. Um, I, would, I would throw that out for 25 years because there were some breweries that were doing it uh, 25 years ago, but it was a whole new thing because you're essentially treating your beer like a wine. Yeah, you're that's a, that's, it's more of a wine than a beer, and I think that's the hardest thing when people go to try sours. And for me, when I tried sours for the first time, I was expecting a well, beer that. taste. Yeah. <laughs> I go into it thinking beer, 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 and then I'm like, Oh, yeah, we're doing not a, a beer. Our dad light right now is a Narragansett lager, right? And if you're expecting that when you drink a sour, yeah, it's not what you're getting. You are not going to enjoy yourself very much. You need to go into it. I think you need to go into it just expecting a different beverage. It's more like a wine. Exactly, and and it's something that you're you, you it's going to be more expensive. Typically, when you're buying this, it's like a fifteen dollar bottle because the amount of time it's a sipper. But it's the amount of time bar. it takes to make a barrel aged sour. This has probably been aged in various oak barrels. Um, for up to two years. Well, that was one of the things that you said was uh, very unique about the sours, is most of them have to be uh, aged in barrels as opposed to aged in metal because uh, something with the pH... Yeah, you know, you know I mean, the way that the, that the, the yeast are going to interact or the souring buds, um, um, they need to have a little bit of the more porousness of the oak. Um, and a lot of times you're going to feed off of what the residual uh, sugars or leftover uh, flavors of the oak barrels that you're going to get from a winery yep. to impart a lot of the flavors that used to hold down the oak, like a Zinfandel, a Pinot Noir, uh, all sorts of wonderful um, wines. Now we had a delicious uh, uh, sour today that was like really mild, mm. and uh, I think that's like a good intro sour for a lot great, of people. Do great you remember, point. Do you yeah. Remember uh, so it's actually, I've got it lit up right now. So if you've never had a sour before and you want it, but you like IPAs, you're, you're starting to get into like hoppy pills. Uh, Grim Brewery uh, makes a wonderful beer called Vacay. And it's a dry hopped uh, sour, but it's very light, very starter refreshing. Sour. Starter. It's a starter yeah. sour. It's a dad light sour. Yeah, it is a dad light sour. Yeah, yeah. It is a dad light sour. It's a dad light sour. Um, so Good that man. and Justin brought that over. So. Yeah, Justin, <laughs> Justin once again uh, coming come, through. We love it. We love it when guests come through, and he didn't even know we were doing sours. Right? It's amazing it's thing, kids man. It's a beautiful thing. It's magic. Well, that's awesome about sours. So basically, uh, sours could be an ale or a lager. Yep. And uh, they just are introducing a wild yeast that uh, during different parts of the and you're process. also very often you're also going to add fruit uh, throughout the process. Now, so with beer. 
in generally you're going to put it in a fermentation vessel and it's going to ferment out we anywhere just, between like share this yeah, actually you know what Mike yeah. we're hogging it over here yeah, yeah, this we is got like, neighbors this in the French bar I want to interrupt this up you from guys Trillium Canton man um, I've just been looking forward to having this and I actually thought we lost it and we, we found did it. we found it from after episode 5 it was <laughs> hidden somewhere so Mike fated uh, farmer Asian pear uh, barrel aged uh, sour from Trillium I'm going to pour myself come on up everybody why don't you grab yourself some this is a good one I like he goes first that's a big neighbor right there that's a tough it's number th actually neighbor. third. One, two, three, no, oh, three industries. Help yourself, neighbor. Here you go, neighbor. That got me there. I was good. Yeah, that was good. That was that was good. Nice, dude. Nah, that have another. That. That. So <laughs> sours are super complex, and we could talk about them forever. Here you go, neighbor. But that's like, that's, that's oh, sort of the basis of it. But there's still, there's like a couple like barrel aged sours, or when you're gonna have something. Ladies first. Oh, what is that? Ladies first. Whoa, whoa, whoa! What's going on over there? A lot of tasting. All right, we're all out. Tasting. Justin's got two glasses. He's trying to fill up his dad. Light with, with the trillium. That's classic. That's a good Justin. But the other the other thing is like there's kettle sours as well, and a kettle sours can be something that you're not aging. So you're going to be adding in a, uh, a like a, a different type of wild yeast early in the like inside the wort after it's being made. So it's going to be able to ferment out really quickly, and those often are mixed with like. Uh, guava and super tropical flavors because they're they're great in the summer, they're yeah. great in the spring. They're it's low like alcohol. A wine. You want food with that? It's like a champagne. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's very effervescent. It's gonna have and it, we, with whatever fruit you're using with, you're still yeah. you're gonna get these wonderful flavors. And this is a, a barrel aged version of I think what that could have been. I don't think it's kettle sour, but it's got some some of that same exuberance in the glass. Cool. So mm. try out the sours and don't go into it thinking that it's gonna be a beer. Just go into it thinking it's a different experience. And bring and it's food, bring food, because the, the the complexities that you're getting in your glass, just like if you're going to drink a a, a fine wine like Mad Dog 2020, you want to have like a charcuterie plate. Uh, you're going to want to have uh, fruit. You're going to have nuts. You're going to have different flavors of cheese. Where the hell are our nuts? Where's our pork? Uh, where's our bark? <laughs> it was so good. Yeah, awesome, uh, man. But that way you're going to have a better experience, and a sour also is your perfect sidecar. Yeah. So when you're fence barring at home, you know, you don't want to spend like a, a million dollars and just drink it by yourself. Wow, is that a million dollar bottle? <laughs> it's from Captain Lawrence. It man, should be. we're balling out here. This is, this is an odds and ends. This fresh is catch! Fresh catch. Fresh catch. I got some pork for you guys. Oh, oh man. man. Thank you for that. All this right. Is exactly what I wanted. Mm. That is delicious. Perfect. Thank you, Matt Campbell, once again for, um, let me taste that with my wine. Let me, let me see if I'm right. It's good. Good pork. Exciting pork, alive pork, puckering pork. <laughs> so much better pork. There's so much more sweetness. <laughs> the darkness, the fat. It's making me salivate. It's fast. Oh, that's great. Oh, I had too much of it. So you know what I need? A little dad light. That's mm, delicious, man. This is good. Wash it down perfectly, man. That's a perfect pair right there. Near a lager and a, a little trillium Asian pear. And pork. Sour. And pork. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Yeah. I think it's time we bring in a new segment. Instead of fence life, we're putting fence life on hold for a little bit because we already taught you how to do the fire. We taught you how to, uh, well, not build a fence, but how you could get a fence on fencefire.com. Shameless plug. Um, <laughs> but the most exciting thing about living in, in, uh, in getting to know your neighbors is getting to know your local farmer. And we happen to have an amazing farmer that is uh, local here in Westchester, and we got to bring him on because he, he, I got so many man. questions. Yeah. So, Phil... <laughs> Can, uh, we're just gonna come right on. Bring it in. on down right, here. Right. Bring it on down here with your pork yeah. and your. <laughs> what do you got there? How much you have a side side car, We gotta fill it up. Yeah. Is there anything in Ready it? Ready for a no, sour? No. Yeah. Nothing's in it. Dude, why don't we open uh, one of those Captain Lawrence sours? Let's try Woo! a new sour. All right, let's do the barrel age. Oh, uh, this one. Let's get Phil something good, man. Phil's a good neighbor. Phil, let's go with the podium. We always give you something good though here, right? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Well, you're not coming to the fence bar and expecting to go. Ugh. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's all good, man. Well, I'm putting this one away from the chest. By the way, if you watched the first opening, you I, I, I got a bruise, people. I'm gonna bruise all I was Drinking a beer with Mike the other day, I almost took my eye out. What, Mike did? Hey! Oh, hey! Hey! Oh, hey! Pork. It's oh, that's, that was classic, Sean. So you guys you didn't do it at 45 degrees like Ooh. a beer fan. It's alive. All right, so um. Phil, what's going on at the farm right now? What's happening? It's springtime. Yeah, I mean, yeah. like, we want it. We is really is the, the, the real they, Are they mating right now, or have they had well, kids and whatnot? There's not a lot of breeding happening right now. Okay, there you go, buddy. But 
there's a lot of animals that are either in the pasture or being born. Ooh, that's an exciting time. Yeah, born. Yeah. yeah. So we're getting baby ducklings every two weeks. Oh, how many ducklings uh, on the Three, farm? 300 at a clip. At a clip? Wow. So, you know, 4,000 all year. 4,000? And how often, how often is that period? Uh, like, how, what's the duration of that period where ducklings are just coming out of 400 at a clip? So, the duration is basically, you know, every two weeks we get the birds, and then we're going to be slaughtering them at seven and eight weeks. 150 a batch, so we'll do 150 week seven, 150 week eight. And then the week after, we'll get on to the next group, so every other week, we're working through these larger groups. And where are these going to once, they, once they've once uh, they matured and been slaughtered? Are they going to local butchers, local restaurants, local my yeah, house, my so mouth? Definitely <laughs> in, and around, <laughs> in and around your mouth. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. But they'll, so what we sell wholesale to the restaurant on site at the farm, uh, Blue Hill, and then we will retail in our farm store and also hopefully work with uh, Campbell Meats on developing charcuterie. Uh, yeah. Yeah. A nice little plug. Age duck bread. <laughs> yeah. You know, we could do maybe a duck fence bar sausage. That will definitely... We've yeah. already done that. I'll chew for a cabra. And I think that was a smash. That was, was that a lamb beef combo? Or? Uh, it was uh, lamb, lamb pork. and a lamb lot pork. of... Speaking lamb of lamb and pork, you guys are hogging that Captain Lawrence. Oh, oh that's over here. here. Hold on. Um, so, uh, really, honestly, the, the, the one oh, thing we, we want to make sure that we're always staying in touch with is what's going on on the farm. And I know um, it's... When you live so close to New York City, you kind of lose sight of like how important farm life is and like everything that happens sure. day to day. And you like, think Whole Foods? Oh yeah, I'm organic. I'm getting it right, from right. the farm and yeah. uh, on Union Square, but not yeah. at the market. Yeah. Uh, and, and and so like, <laughs> what's what's it like day to day where you're like constantly like it's not like going to an office or like going to a job and like you're just taking care of animals. And yeah. Actually, one of the most interesting things is like its inception to kill, and so you're yeah. having a relationship with so you explain a little bit of what, uh, yes, what for you as the farmer, like what is that like to, to, to go through the life cycle of life? It's a very real experience. I mean, I think it brings us closer to our humanity and our connection to nature. You know, it's, we're forced to uh, witness and be a part of death for the beauty of what we see. So, you know, as bringing the animals into this world, you have a responsibility to bring them a humane death out of respect for them and uh, you know, utilize all of them rather right. than let it go. Away. That's what we talked right. about with Matt and, and Matt's like, you know, making sure that the animals that he gets at his butcher shop are all being used. You can't just right. like throw away well, yeah, yeah. Yeah. the whole thing. And it's that, and right, 800 exactly. pounds of Yes, yeah. we're and doing something with it. And then what's really cool about the restaurant that we work with Blue Hill is that they pay attention to every step of the process, and so they're involved in like even the slaughter. They want mm. they want to make sure they get the head back and that the scald on the pig is good, and they get the liver and, mm. yeah. and the heart Wonderful. and the kidney because they don't want any part to go to waste. And so if they get, are you know not getting the whole animal back, they're disappointed, and they might not want to keep working with you because they know. Right. That yeah. There's that other things. Gave its life to be able to feed their customers in the, in the dining room. So. That's really important. Yeah. Man. Wow. That, yeah. That's awesome. Um. So a few weeks ago, right there. I feel yeah. I'm feeling really connected right now to the fence bar. This is why this is why farm life is such an important segment. Totally. But um, talking, uh, trying to lighten it up a little bit. Sure. A few weeks ago, you guys uh, gave birth to a lot of lambs, yeah. and so we want to know about the lambs, how they're doing, how many lambs, yeah. how the moms are doing. Yeah. yeah. So uh, we had a successful <laughs> lambing season. Started on March 19th, 2008. 2008? Oh. Oh. Okay, barely a lamb? It doesn't sound like it would be a sour lamb. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we basically were in the barn every four hours at least. You know, probably they're tighter than that because once you get in there, you're there for at least an hour, even if it's 2 a.m. With the babies! Yeah. yeah. How many they, babies? They need attention. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so we had 65 baby lambs 
Um, and we have actually been day ranging them out of our barn. You've been doing what now? Day ranging. So day range, is that when they're going to pasture? Yeah, so instead of just cold turkey, like, sorry, you're out of the barn, now you live outside. <laughs> okay, yeah, right. Gotcha. Like daycare, like introducing uh, them. Yeah, it's preschool yeah, for a yeah, like, yeah. We're just hardening them off yeah. so when they're big lambs, <laughs> they don't get, you know, Atrophy. beat up because uh, it's raining out or it's cold. Like they've been able to get a little bit of exposure. Just toughen them up, man. Yeah. Toughen them up. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. what we did to Albert the cat at the end, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Albert the cat. Boom! That we is. That we is. That's awesome. Well, I hope you'll come on uh, for future episodes and you could give us a little bit insight as like what's, what's going on on the yeah. farm. I yeah. know like stuff changes constantly yeah. and it'd be yeah. great to know what's happening. Is there anything really exciting yeah, happening this week? Yeah, there is. Um, we have so... I think there's a full moon in the next few days here. Oh, and oh, we actually have a sow, uh, our number one girl, Cinnamon. Cinnamon? Cinnamon. She's about to give birth oh. to piglets. Oh, that's so cute. And we got her all set up. She's all cozy. Yeah. Ready how to big and how baby. much does Cinnamon you weigh? About 600 pounds. Oh, Jesus. Good oh, girl. Pounds. And that's yeah. with piglet. Without piglet? When are we expecting? Less, because, you know, she puts on that baby weight. Right, yeah. <laughs> when are we expecting? You know about that, ladies, right? <laughs> uh, well, you need your mom lights. Her, her official due date is Saturday. <laughs> Saturday. Yeah. Okay, well, we'll be uh, looking out for I cinnamon, and cinnamon. Uh, if we could get, like, updates, we'll post yeah, them Hog on Boy. our Instagram. Instagram, yeah. uh, uh, Hog Boy, correct? Yeah. yeah. H-O-G-B-O-I. B-O-I. Like hog boy? boy? Not like <laughs> bear. <laughs> Not like hog. Dude, like thank you so yeah. much. And we actually have a gift yeah. for you. Uh, oh, wow. Sean uh, gave me a fire stick, and we said, if yeah. you know someone who loves fire and you Needs love them, it. give them a fire stick. Wow. We, so from so the fence bar you, to your fire, man. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much yeah. for everything you've done, been doing. Yeah. Yeah. Keep it up. All right. Thanks. So, yeah, uh, nice neighbor. That's farm Woo! life, people. Yeah. That's, uh, that's what we do a lot of that. Thank you, Phil. Thank you, Sam, as well. Sam's here as well. Those 75 lambs didn't just get up. Uh, not, I was going to say free pasteurized. <laughs> but, you know, uh, warmly introduced <laughs> to, the, to the greens. Free pasteurized. Sam. Pre pasteurized. Yeah. Awesome. In another way. Awesome. What time is it, Mike? It is. Beer Report! Beer Report! Beer Report! Oh, beer report time. So much happening right now with the Beer Report. And uh, I think that right now, I gotta tell you that our next guest, Shauna from Green Growler, she is celebrating seven years of being in business and cel- is celebrating it by doing seven weeks of seven different special beer things. And I'm gonna be speaking about one of them beer things. When's your night? I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> but it's gonna be amazing, yeah. I'll tell you. It'll this sell out great. immediately. Um, everybody but, from Fence Wars, Kevin. That's right, everybody from uh, from everywhere. But So that's what I've got going on, and she's gonna be our next guest, which is gonna be on May 9th, I wanna say? That sounds right. Yep. That sounds right. What about you? What you got going on, Tree? Um, I, I've actually, there's an event happening in Hastings, uh, and even though Hastings is a rival, there's sometimes some cool events that happen These there. guys, the rivalries in the river towns. Yeah, the mill in Hastings, Hops for Hope, um, oh. is all about uh, benefiting, uh, benefiting American Foundation for Suicide Prevention, and one of our followers, uh, Nicole Ryan, um, is actually going to be hosting it. She's oh. a bartender from Saratoga. Thanks for being thanks for bringing that to our attention, yeah. and make sure you go to the mill. They have wonderful beer, wonderful food, wonderful people. Amy, what do you got? Well, today, actually, Industrial Arts released a new can. Last Ooh. month, it was Weights and Measures. Right, that was good. Yeah. And this yeah. month, it's a hibiscus. Uh, what is it called? It is so a collaboration. Roads. With Two, Two Roads Brewing. Two Roads Brewing Company, Connecticut. And it's, it's a hibiscus Northeast, Northeast IPA. That's what's it called? It's a hibiscus Northeast IPA. It's called the New England IPA. Blue meringue. Blue meringue. Blue meringue. Blue meringue. Bloom like a beautiful flower. Like spring, man. Like our so Mexico they're selling it today, so. Thursday. By the time you see this, it'll be Friday. Okay. So you can go this weekend probably and pick some up. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what do you got, Mike? We got L Wife uh, Electric mm-hmm. Rhino, which we discussed earlier. It drank uh, earlier. But it's probably maybe sold out, and there's a new one coming out soon, which is called... Don't remember, but uh, check out Alewife yeah, Brewing Company. Out, but still sold try out. to go and knock down the door if you can. And if you see Electric Rhino, just get it. It's it's my favorite dead light of the day. Can I please have a little bit more? Yeah, let's have a little bit um, all right. Well, I think we do the rankings. Let's Justin, bring the rankings. Let's get the rankings let's, going. Let's, let's bring in Justin to help us out here. Hey, while we're looking at the cans, I really also have to say thank you to Paul from... It's Lincoln Crafted. Oh, Justin can go. One of our favorite dad lights. How do you get them? Yeah, um, you could find uh, Paul at Lincoln. Oh, sorry, Lincoln Crafted. Oh. 
them and you can send them cans and he'll fill them up and send it back to you or he'll just send you whatever he's got. That's dope, Thank man. Thank you for that. And he sent us a whole bunch. Thanks, man. We haven't drank that yet. I, I think... What do we got going on over I, here? I don't know. The vacay has got to come. I got to say the vacay has got to be like pretty close because... It's, it's right now. It's between the, uh, the Pear Posturus. And the vacay. I think you guys I'm are forgetting about the grim. Oh, Wait, that's what I thought I had. Isn't that the vacay? That is the vacay. Oh, oh sorry. Yeah, yeah, it's really the vacay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that, it's got a light on it. So this, uh, I think we're going to have to go with this next. Because yeah. this is as far as sours go. It just blew my mind. Mm-hmm. It had so much going on. Two great breweries. Do you agree? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. And really, Let me know when I'm offline here. Really? No, no. The reason I think this is number one is because as an introductory sour, it's really important to highlight that. This is a good, refreshing, light, sour. Yeah. It's not as, like, aggressive. And maybe aggressive is not the right word, but sours really make you pucker up from the oh, throat. Cool. And this one's just smooth. Whoa, 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 whoa. I think the mint needs to be number one. Oh, oh, where is the mint? I drank it already. Oh, no, you didn't. No, you didn't. We, we drank it. <laughs> <laughs> we knew it was going to happen. We didn't drink the mint. It's still around. And then what? what do we got? I, I think this, the Trillium, the Asian pear, the trillium was, good. was wonderful. Paired with the uh, smoked pork butt blades. And then i got to say, honorable oh, mention to uh, Naren Gansett. Dad Light. Dad Light of the Night. Yeah. Hi, neighbor. Howdy, neighbor. <laughs> yeah. Dad Light, uh, Dad light of, the, of the Night. Other it's than up. an electric rhino. I well, mean, this whole situation is fluid, hey. and this changes throughout the night. Smash! Yeah. No, no, no. Oh. I was He's turning had one rhinos and a Oh, so. he was going for the rhino. Yeah. Okay, I like that. We'll do that later on Instagram. You'll see us because uh, we're still drinking here at the fence bar. We still got couple things that haven't been open, KCPC, yeah. some folks beer. So we're going we're gonna to keep drinking some beer with Justin, Mike, Hogboy, Sam, Campbell Meats. Uh, and if you guys thought this was cool, tell Please. a friend and come back. Please. If you thought we suck, tell a friend and come back. And do a thing called subscribe to YouTube because apparently none of our friends know what YouTube is. Yeah. Or they don't know how to what subscribe. What is YouTube? How do you spell YouTube. YouTube. We'll see okay. you for episode 7. I love it, man. Good job. I love you, neighbor. Howdy, All neighbor. Right. Howdy, neighbor. Cheers. Thanks, Jeff. To finish off this episode, I think we need to have a proper fence life pro tip. Fence life. It's fence a recycling life. recycling tip. Uh, don't just try to uh, wheel out your recycling in a wheelbarrow. wheelbarrow. You actually have to put it in the proper recycling blue. containers, blue containers, or clear, clear recycling bags. Clear plastic bags. Plastic bags. Or, or check. check your town's uh, code book. However or the they want manual it. on the internet web. The bylaws. Because yeah. we also found out that if you put it out in a wheelbarrow, they won't take it. They won't take it. They didn't take they it. They don't want to like lift the wheelbarrow up and dump it in the truck, I think. Yeah, yeah. that's probably it. So, uh, uh, well, I guess, you know, when you finish your beer, take it out of a koozie if you have it in a koozie. <laughs> Reusable. Reusable. And then, do what the alchemist says. Don't be a douchebag. They recycle your can. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, there's still a little. Bit. Yeah, I heard that thud. I was like, uh, I was like good thing comes with your kid. <laughs>